Hey everyone, my name is Michael Jantz and I'm a student at Florida International University. Uh, I'm studying computer engineering and I'm currently in the class Embedded Operating Systems taught by Dr. Alexander Pons. Um, this is a YouTube video project for that class and um, it is my first YouTube video. <clears throat> and uh, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to get cross-compiling and remote browsing for the BeagleBone Black under Windows 7. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the Java Development Kit installed. Um, without this, you will not be able to open up Eclipse and you will only be faced with many errors. So that's the first thing you're going to want to want to get. Second thing that you will need is the Eclipse uh, IDE for uh, C slash C++ uh, developers. This is very straightforward. It's a simple download from their website and you're, you're ready to go. The next file that you need is the toolchain for ARM. There are many different toolchains available for Windows, but uh, I think the best one um, that I've come across is Sorcery Codebench Lite. It's uh, the easiest one to use, and um, <clears throat> it's very straightforward to set up as well. And the, the last file that we will need is the GNU Make. This is a Windows version of the Linux Make command, and uh, it is used to compile and uh, create our executable files for the BeagleBone Black. Once we, everything has been done, then we can go ahead and uh, set up Eclipse and, and you know make, sh make the necessary uh, changes to it to get everything rolling. So with that in mind, here are some links. Uh, these are just the links to the files that I mentioned that we will be using. Uh, for the JDK, you simply go to the website and um, <clears throat> once there, just head over to download or you can Google for this, Java SE. Or, or Java or JDK and, and just download the latest version for that. Um, click on accept and then scroll down and just head over here, Java SE Development Kit, and then select the, uh, you know, if you're using Windows 32 bit, select this file, and if you're using 64 bit, make sure you select that file. <clears throat> Once you have that installed, then you can go ahead and start to download Eclipse. When you get to the Eclipse website, you might be faced with, uh, you might be confused because there are a lot of different packages available, but the one that we will be using is uh, Eclipse IDE for C slash C++. So make sure that you select this file and then again choose Windows 32-bit or 64-bit depending on your platform. Once that is installed, you will also need this little tiny file here. This is uh, GNU Make. You can find it at this website and uh, just head over here to where it says complete package and hit on setup and then that will download the file for you. And the last file that you need is the Sorcery Codebench Lite. This is a little trickier to download because um, once you click on download Lite edition they ask you to put in your email address and the download link will be sent to that email address so make sure that you use a valid email address for the download link. Uh, once you fill out this little form, go to the to go to your email, get the download, and uh, save it to your desktop. And uh, once we have all of those files, we will be uh, we will be ready to go. So with that in mind, let's uh, head over to our Eclipse download over here. This is assuming that you already have the Java installation or the the. Uh, Java development kit installed. It takes a little while depending on the system, so to save on some time, I'm not going to be showing that. But it's a very it's a very straightforward process. It's uh, you know just a lot of next next next, and then you're you're already good to go with that. So once you have JDK installed, you will open up your your Eclipse uh, zip file and just extract that to any location that's most convenient to you. Uh, I'm putting mine on my desktop. Once that file has been extracted, go ahead and open it and uh, open up Eclipse. What we, what we will be doing now is we will install a plugin for for uh, Eclipse that makes it a little easier when installing our tool chain um, as far as uh, importing all the settings and stuff so that every time we make a new C++ project file everything is already there for us and ready to go. So once Eclipse opens up head over to help and scroll down over here to install new software. At the pop-up, um, take a little break and head over to your browser. Go over to Google and search for ARM for Eclipse plugin. 
And then you're going to see the second link over here. It says Welcome to GNU ARM Eclipse Plugin. Just go ahead and click that. And then head over to Downloads. Once over at Download, scroll over to where it says the Eclipse Way and copy the link that's over there. This is the link that contains the uh, plugin file for Eclipse. So head back over to your Eclipse, paste the, the link, and hit enter. You will then see the, the plugin over here that we need, so just go ahead and give it a check mark and next it over to get it all, all installed and ready to go. When it's done installing, it will ask you to restart. You can go ahead and click no because we don't need to use Eclipse anymore at this point. So just go ahead and close Eclipse and uh, just leave it closed down for now. <clears throat> After Eclipse has been done with the plugin, head back over to your downloads folder and open up the toolchain for ARM, which is the uh, Sorcery Codebench Lite that you downloaded. Also, the, the links for the, the links that I had earlier in the PowerPoint, I will see if I can put those into the YouTube description. Um, that might make it a little easier for those watching instead of, you know, going back and forth to copy-paste or whatever. Uh, I'll put those in the YouTube description so that it's there for your convenience. So, once this is open, go ahead and click on Next. And just Next all the way, and uh, just select Typical Installation. Um, when it asks you to install and um, pick a location, make sure that you take it out of the default location. Um, it's been reported that when you install the toolchain into a, a directory that has a space, just like program files over here, it will cause issues in Eclipse. So um, make sure you pick a, a different location. Um, from, from my own convenience, I'm selecting the C drive and uh, I'm going to put it in the folder called Sorcery. Oh, I have old tools in there. Give me just a second. Get rid of this folder over here. Okay. <clears throat> so, and the next, the next tab says that uh, add product path. This is very important. Make sure that you hit mod modify path for all users. Hit next, next, and install. The the path is important for Eclipse so that. Um, that that's what establishes the the link for all of the uh, necessary setup that's needed for the for the the linker and the compiler and all of that and and uh, with the plugin that we downloaded so that you don't need to do it yourself. So while this is installing, I think I will go ahead and install the make the GNU make file that will um, just to save up on some time so you can go ahead and open up that file it's a very simple file you can install it anywhere you want again I'm going to install it to the C drive just for convenience so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next 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 and finish so that's that for that once the uh, tool chain is done you can go ahead and close that as well just next and done and uh, then you're done that's it for installing everything but before we open up Eclipse head over to the folder where the GNU make is located and uh, on my, in my particular setup I have it on the C drive and open up the folder and go into bin inside of bin you will see three files it is important that you take these files and copy them and then we're gonna go back to our C drive or wherever you installed your tool chain and again in my case I installed it to the C drive open up that folder and you will see another folder there called bin also uh, open up that bin folder and paste those three files that we copied inside of there. Once you've done that, then you're all set and you can go ahead and open up Eclipse. Once Eclipse is opened up, you can head over to the workbench and then um, go ahead and go over to file new 
and do a C++ project. And we're going to select this over here, ARM Cross Target Application. And uh, you can select, just for the demonstration, we're going to take the Hello World project. And make sure you select the tool chain that we use, which is Sorcery Light. Give your project a name. Next, next, and finish. Now, if you if you drop open if you open up the uh, Project Explorer, you'll see that all of the necessary files that browse over to the uh, to the tool chain have already been added for us. So that's it, that everything is perfect. And uh, once uh, once you're over at this screen, head over to Project and Properties, and we're gonna set up the uh, the C++ compiler and uh, the linker and the builder and everything to to build for our Beagle Bone. So head over to C++ Build, click on Settings, and you're going to be at this screen where it says Target Processor. Head over here and select the Cortex A8. That is what the Beagle Bone Black is using, and that's what we need to have for our for our setup. Then head over down to where it says Float ABI and select Library M Float ABI equals Soft. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on apply, and then you're done. Hit OK. Once you do this, then it's safe to um, build all the files that you need, and just click on build all, and that will give you the, the executable file that we will be copying over to our BeagleBone, which is the next step. So hit build all, and if everything goes right, you should not have any problems. <clears throat> so just give it a second for the, uh, for the files to pop over. There it is binaries. This is the file that we will be copying over to our BeagleBone. So to get remote systems working for the BeagleBone, head over to Window, go to Show View, and hit Other. And scroll down to Remote Systems, and again Remote Systems, and hit OK. And then you're going to get a new tab over here. Just for convenience, I'm going to move it over here. <coughs> Once you have it um, in wherever location that you prefer, right click on local and do new connection. And then select Linux, hit next, and hostname. This is the IP address for the BeagleBone, which is by default 192.168.7.2. And then give it a connection name, whatever you want. I will call mine BeagleBone Black. Now before you hit finish, make sure you go over to next first and then select SSH files hit next again select processes shell Linux hit next again hit SSH shells hit next and then you can finish your file once you've done this then the beagle bone is set up for a remote so I will go ahead and grab my beagle bone and plug it into my computer just give it a second while it loads up Okay, there we go. So, once the uh, BeagleBone is hooked up, make sure that the drivers are installed, obviously, first for the BeagleBone. If you don't know how to do that, then uh, just plug it into your computer, head over to the, to the little folder that it creates, hit start, and then uh, you should be able to just follow the directions here, and they'll tell you which installer you should use and, and you know, whatever that you need. Obviously, if you're in 64-bit, use 64-bit. If not, then 32-bit. So, <clears throat> pop back over to Eclipse, uh, click on SFTP files to start browsing the, the BeagleBone. By default, the user ID is root and there is no password. So once that connects, you're going to see a bunch of the folders that are in your home directory. Um, if you want to, you can create a folder or you can just place it in there. I'm going to create a folder called Test. So um, <clears throat> once you have that done, go back to your binaries and, and click on copy the one the file that says test.elf or whatever you named your file.elf and then paste it onto your beagle bone once the file has been pasted right click on ssh terminals and do launch terminal this is going to give us a terminal for the beagle bone so that we can communicate to it directly from our host system so we're going to browse over into the folder that we just copied our, our elf file into and we're going to give it 
uh, permissions to, to be able to run. So we're going to use the command chmod ugl plus x. And at this point, if everything works out, you should be able to run your file without any issues at all. As you can see, after running the file, it displayed the message that was in the code, and everything seems to be all right. And uh, that about wraps it up for uh, for when it comes down to getting cross compiling and remote systems for the BeagleBone on Windows. Again, my name is Michael, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did creating it. Have a good day.